the future for carbonated beverages, what shoppers say about eating out, the relationship between serotonin and carbs, and it's time to get the green foods ready for St. Patty's Day. For the week of February 28th, 2011, this is Food News Today. Good morning. Food News Today is sponsored by ConAgra Foods, who shares with me the desire to provide the most current, interesting, and unbiased food news. What will the next generation of Pepsi drinkers and people who smile with a Coke in their hand be drinking in the future? Soda manufacturers have no choice but to evolve if they want to survive. If they don't make changes, and soon, soda consumption will erode at the hands of alternatives. The truth is that this category did not grow to around $19 billion a year by being insensitive to consumer demand. Soda companies are some of the most innovative, insightful, resourceful, and reliable suppliers to the supermarket world. But sodas with up to 13 teaspoons of sugar in just one 12-ounce can need to come to grips with America's emerging health mindset and work to redefine their role in our diets. Parents don't want sodas for their kids. 61% of Los Angeles parents support banning drinks with added sugars in schools because they associate them with obesity. Dr. Steven Greenberg, a Harvard Medical School neurologist and vice chairman of the International Stroke Conference, found higher risks for stroke and heart attack among people who drink diet soda every day versus those who drink none. And Americans are finally taking notice. So what should soda become in the next decade? Well, here's a hint. It won't be sold in bottles. We predict home kitchens will have built-in carbonated tanks as part of unified soda-making systems with water purifiers. On installation, your water is tested for pH balance, calcium, hardness, and other factors, which will be balanced to maximize flavor and the bubbles. Households will be able to individually profile their beverages to suit their dietary flavor and yes, even the size of those bubbles. They'll dial up a particular kind of sugar or sweetener in specific amounts, same with the flavor, and even keep the soda clear in order to avoid artificial colors. People will have more control. They'll lug less from the store, they'll be kinder to the environment. And because they'll be able to customize their drinks and make them healthier, soda could actually become more central to more beverage occasions and meal occasions in the home. In our latest consumer panel, we wanted to understand consumer behavior across eating venues, specifically comparing behaviors and choices when eating at home versus eating at a restaurant. What are consumers' priorities, and what do they choose more often in restaurants versus eating at home? Well, the top three priorities when buying food and beverages in a restaurant were cited as taste, health, and price, versus priorities when making purchases in the supermarket, which were health, price and taste. Ultimately, we all value price, taste, and health, but the order in which we expect our restaurants versus supermarkets, and by extension what we eat at home, to deliver on these expectations is quite different. Consumers cite that in restaurants they're choosing less fried, more vegetables, more salads, more water, more grilled, and less dessert. That happens most often in restaurants. When we asked our Facebook fans where they ate healthier, home or at restaurants, here's what they had to say. Naomi said that she eats healthier at home, total control over portion sizes and nutritional content. Christina says, definitely at home. I want control of salt, fat, and where the ingredients come from. Molly says, definitely at home. We buy organic and I know what goes into the food that I prepare for my family. Besides, we can watch out for portion control much better. And Susan had another comment. She actually has a different frame. She eats healthier in restaurants. She says she has a hellacious work schedule. She's too tired to cook when she goes home, so it's generally just a can of soup. I wish I could cook more. What is it about the late afternoon around 4 or 5 o'clock that changes many of us from rational, in control, effective, clear thinking, energetic people into grumpy, irritable, and exhausted? And the only cure seems to be those carbs, like sweet or starchy snacks. Well, both the change in mood and food cravings are due to the time of day and the brain levels of serotonin. Serotonin helps balance mood and it seems to become less active late in the afternoon. The combination of a mood and appetite change is a signal that serotonin activity may be dropping. 
the alteration in serotonin activity has never been directly measured because doing so would actually involve invasive procedures. Instead, most research involving serotonin is observational and measures behavioral changes. Those changes in behavior can tell us whether or not there's a change going on in the brain. So what are the signs of decreased serotonin levels? Grumpiness, irritability, impatience, fatigue, the inability to focus, depression, and anger, which are often accompanied by a craving for carbohydrates. But are carbs really the cure? MIT researchers compared consuming carbohydrates and protein on our moods. Protein was used because it actually prevents serotonin from being made, and not surprisingly, no improvement in mood was found after the subjects consumed the protein. On the contrary, and as expected, the carbohydrate drinks left those who were feeling irritable feeling great. Fortunately, serotonin mood relief does not require eating a whole box of cookies or a loaf of white bread or a whole bottle of soda. As long as the snack contains about 30 grams of carbs, no more than one to two grams of fat and protein, serotonin can be produced within 20 to 30 minutes. Now here's some good afternoon options, breakfast cereal, that's eaten dry, three quarters of a cup of oatmeal, quinoa, or brown rice with seasonings. Now, try to beat the four o'clock slump by including protein at every meal. With complex carbs and healthy fats, this will keep you feeling fuller and provide slow-burning energy that will last longer than those sugary snacks. Are you getting ready to go green for St. Patty's Day? Well, we've all heard of green beer for the big day, but here are some helpful and fun hints on how you can go green from morning until night. Going green on this day originates from the coming of spring and the lush landscape of Ireland as the new green buds of flowers and blades of grass reach for the sun. So first, head to your local supermarket and buy a package of liquid green food coloring. McCormick actually has a special green one ounce package. And remember, a little coloring goes a long way. So just using one or two drops may be enough for each of the green recipe ideas that I'm gonna tell you about. Also, remember that lighter foods like white bread, milk, popcorn, and pasta color better. Darker foods don't mix well with green. For breakfast, add a couple of drops of green food coloring to milk. That gives those leprechauns a great start to the day. And by the way, not just the milk in the glass, but milk in the cereal. And if you really want to signal Ireland forever, or for the purist Erin Gobra, serve Lucky Charms with green milk. For the adults in the family who actually remember the cat in the hat, add two or three drops of the food coloring to egg beaters and whip up a green omelet and load the insides with green pepper broccoli, and scallions. For dinner, it's all about the pasta. After you cook your spaghetti, rigatoni, or even ravioli, rinse the cooked pasta, and then before you add any oil or sauce, add three or four drops of food coloring to the pot and mix in with the pasta. For the best visual, put the sauce, of course pesto will be the truest to the celebration, on the plate first, and then lay the green pasta on top. Then add some green veggies. And if you want to keep it simple, go with the green beer or green soda. Place the glasses in your fridge or freezer at least three hours prior to pouring. Add two drops to the bottom of the glass, pour in clear soda like Club Soda Sprite or 7-Up or a light colored beer. Do not stir. Let the color mix naturally with the beverage. Happy St. Patrick's Day. For Food News Today, I'm Phil Lempert. Thanks for joining us. If you have a colleague in retailing, the media, or a blogger who would also like to receive our advanced email stories, please ask them to visit us at foodnewstoday.com to sign up.